بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونسلم ونصلي على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد قالوا يا ذا القرنين إن يأجوج ومأجوج مفسدون في الأرض so the people came to Dhul Qarnayn and they said, Ya Ajuj and Majuj are doing mischief and harm in the land. Fahal naj'alu laka kharjan. So should we collect money and pay a tribute for this protection? What, what resources is required for our protection? So the people of Iman search for skilled people who know the art of protection and preservation. They gather their resources because they don't have the assets with regards to intellectual. But with regards to wealth, they have got those assets. So now you do need to find the intellectuals, the experts, the masters in the field that can aid you for your protection and preservation. So this is what happened. So. Uh, they got together, a group of the Ummah need to get together, pull their resources, see where the risk is. فَهَلْ نَجْعَلُ لَكَ خَرْجًا What is needed, what asbab, what means of preservation, so that عَلَىٰ أَن تَجْعَلَ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمْ سَدَّىٰ So the whole idea here is in summary, in a nutshell, they are saying that you need to create some form of protection, a barrier between us and them. So this is one option, one solution where they will no have, have no access to oppress us, to usurp our wealth and to threaten our lives and our sovereignty. So we should be at Amman and peace. We need to leave home, go to work do our uh, work and responsibilities. We need to revive the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they found a skilled person. So he said, no problem. Solution done. I'll, 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 I'll resolve this problem. I will uh, erect between you and them a barrier. Give me zubar. Ayan. So the word Zubar is a plural of Zubra, which means pieces or chunks of something. So this was the opinion of Abdullah ibn Abbas, Mujahid, Qatada, etc. So these pieces were like bricks or blocks. And Hatta idha sawa sadafaini. Then he had filled the gap between the two mountain cliffs. So these blocks were, were built starting from the bottom until it reached the tops of the mountains and it filled the width and the height of the gap. So there is a difference of opinion amongst uh, the scholars with regards to the uh, width and the height etc. قَالًا فُخُوا blow. So he lit a fire and حَتَّى إِذَا جَعَلَهُ نَارًا It was made into a red flame fire Atuni afrigh alayhi qitra. So he said, bring me uh, qitran to pour over them. So Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, Ikrama, Qatada, etc. said it was copper. Some uh, Mufassirin say it was molten. So this entire process which was implemented was successful. And it was a means of preservation. And the same Ya'juj and Ma'juj will emerge when they breach this wall. So it was such a strong wall. It doesn't just build in a wall, so, no. Or just get few people and sort it out, no. But can you imagine the thought processes and, and, and the resources that was needed at that time to execute such a daunting task so, it is important for the people of Iman as well. 
so coming back to the point of, of vehicle safety and security how many people have thought of keeping keeping bulletproof jackets in their vehicles if there's a, a situation of compromise even if a person doesn't own any of those asbab for, for, for preservation and protection at least you can preserve protect yourself in the situation likewise many a time you are traveling you've got some valuables uh, going to a, a walima a function a wedding etc so the jewelry that you have the ladies uh, men have expensive watches etc uh, you have some money on you you traveling so do you have a safe in your vehicle uh, so we securely and it should be in such a place whether it's a safe whether a compartment is customized so if there is a point of compromise and uh, you are searched your vehicle is searched your valuables are preserved and you're not put at risk likewise sometimes Allah protect one and all a person meets up in an accident uh, there is a looting situation so uh, the, your valuables are at a place so an accident scene a person's unconscious is taken to the hospital the vehicle is left there it's towed away your assets are still safe and secure so whereas there are people that, that, that wait there are uh, places areas where people are prone to uh, accident there's actually some places and and this is a real life happening where people put oil on the road grease on the road because they thrive on you meet up meeting up in an accident and then they loot the person likewise you have these tow truck vehicles who need business so they grease the road so you meet up in an accident and then they charge you exorbitant fees etc so a compartment likewise if a person has any any tools of protection as well then uh, spare items which 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 which, which will, will be very beneficial uh, in many situations so uh, some people have the habit of wearing caps and sunglasses so what's the hikmat and wisdom so they say if the front windscreen if there's a side a glass is smashed then at least it will not come in your eyes and incapacitate you so this is again a thought process uh, thinking more further than that if you cannot afford an armored vehicle no problem what about just the windscreen of your car so if there is an attempt from the front and the armed people you know you are protected or on the side by the driver's side so just one glass or two glasses to make it bulletproof so again the mindset many people put in uh, put in the vehicles tracking devices so do you have an emergency panic where within one second you can press the panic button likewise the security companies the tracking companies may phone you when you go outside a designated and designated zone where there's a risk area so they will call you and the perpetrators are listening on the background with a gun on your head so do you have a code word where you speak normal but when you use that word it will trigger them to know that it's a code red and they need to send backup likewise at home you've got security companies do you have an arrangement when they phone in then the one code is the correct code which you normally use all the time the same code which is an uh, another code which when you say it, they will accept it and make like the conversation was successful but that code is a code red code so the perpetrators listening will think so that you gave in and you gave the right code and they will continue but in actual fact backup is on its way so uh, these are important points likewise between husband and wife as well and there is a situation then uh, a certain word that you use a code red word which will activate systems likewise uh, the tracking company that you have some companies give the option of shutting down the vehicle remotely so when there's a need and you need to shut down the vehicle you've got access to your vehicle likewise uh, during 
a situation they come with these mobile signal jammers so the tracking companies cannot track the vehicle etc but there is another gadget which they put in vehicles which jammers cannot run on that frequency so have you done some research on a tracking company and do we have anti-signal jamming technology in that there's an extra fee no problem but it's your life it's your children's life at risk so a, a simple thing like a cutoff switch in the vehicle it, it, it can help in many situations so uh, a person needs to do research so it's, it's, it's more about preparing a mindset etc simple example that we give is a person just trims their nails and then one day they'll say you know what uh, my nails are too short so all the time you come into a situation where you're saying your nails are short but you could have left one nail little bit long enough so that uh, you do not complain about it or carrying a, uh, a simple item that you don't need to use your nails because you're going to harm yourself you're going to cause yourself harm so a simple thing like a Swiss card uh, Victoria Knox etc makes a Swiss card which comes with a small mini knife a, a, a screwdriver uh, a, a toothpick a, uh, a pen etc the different gadgets on one small card so it's like a, a credit card but uh, it can save you for a lot of inconvenience so so we, we face the same situation every day but the mindset mindset is very important a simple thing like uh, bug sweeps so have you ever considered uh, sweeping your home for bugs so what they would do is get somebody to work in your home send some a domestic worker and they've put bugs everywhere so you don't know which which worker is coming they've paid them a large sum of money to say put this gadget here likewise on your vehicles it's very easy they need three seconds the magnetic tracking devices so have you did a vehicle sweep to see if there's any tracking devices if you find any de devices you know you are being watched you are monitored you are high risk likewise you go different places so there are gadgets where you can track detectors there's gadgets where you can track uh, hidden cameras so whether your workplace important information important people that have come who are your clients uh, where do you source products from so not only people are intruding to, to, to rob you but the intellectual property hackers on your system etc so have you gone out to to see and to analyze so we need to have uh, a, a, a prepping mindset on its own so this there's, there's a certain extent which experts can treat you in, uh, and, and train you but in your situation you need to evolve as well and uh, you you each person's situation is different and unique so we need to evolve likewise having an analytic mindset compared to herd mentality so you get the movers and shakers and you get the followers so what's my mindset uh, is it a herd mentality and just go by the flow or the, the mindset of evolution, etc. So it's, 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 it's a mindset. You see, there was a teacher and uh, she was rebuking the, the student that it's clear that you haven't studied your geography. What's your excuse? You haven't studied, you, you, you haven't gone over your work, you, you don't know what's happening in lessons in class. So the student gave a reply. And this is just to understand a mindset. What, what mindset he had? He said, well, my dad says the world is changing every day, so I decided to wait until it settles down. My dad says the world is changing every day, so I decided to wait until it settles down. So, oh, teacher, this geography that you're teaching me, it's going to change, it's going to evolve. So, uh, again, just at the angle of, 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 of how we look at things, uh, another teacher told uh, the student, if you had one dollar, and you ask your father for another, how many dollars would you have? So the boy replied, one dollar. So the math teacher was trying to teach a student maths by way of example. So the boy replied, one dollar, so the teacher, now trying to rebuke the, the, the child, saying, you don't know arithmetic, you don't know maths. You had one dollar and another one dollar, it's obvious. So what did the boy reply? You don't know my father. The teacher said, you don't know arithmetic. The student said, you don't know my father so again a mindset a mindset uh 
And if we got it wrong, then we got it wrong properly. Like the voice on the phone said uh, that uh, Imran has a cold and hasn't and, and cannot make it to school today. So somebody phoned the school secretary and said that uh, he has a cold and can't come to school today. So the secretary said, who's this? Who's speaking? So the child said, this is my dad. This is my dad. He got it wrong. Like the Jamaat came to somebody and said, we're looking uh, for your father. Please uh, send him out. So the boy went in and then came back and said, my daddy says he's not at home. My daddy says he is not at home. So mindset. Likewise, in your situation, uh, be prompt to, to consider yourself in the situation like you are the thief, you are the perpetrator. So if somebody were to rob you, if somebody were to hijack you, if somebody were to kidnap you, if somebody were to break into your house, then where would they take advantage of you? So this is a mindset. If you want to be ahead of the game, the mindset of thieves, if you want to be ahead of the game, let's take an example, kidnappings. So many a time it occurs near the vehicle close to home or close to your work. So what, what are the factors which, which uh, attackers look at? One is they track in your routine, so travel timings, travel routes. Secondly, uh, your route is a route where there's a lot of opportunities, where you are blocked, where you are stopped. Thirdly, and this is a very important factor, is you are switched off because you feel you are relatively safe. For example, when you're leaving home, so you're just leaving home, you've got a lot of work to do, your mind is busy, you've got in your comfort zone, you feel secure in the morning, maybe you just woke up, you groggy, you still need to sort out, adjust your seat belt, get your phone, send your messages. So your mind, so literally three, four, five, six blocks away, streets away, and that's where they do it. Likewise, when you leave in work, you're just tired, you're exhausted, you finish. Your mindset is busy, you're on overdrive. So that's the thief mindset to see that you will be the most awful and negligent time. So you need to be on the, uh, 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 on the reverse side, that where uh, I'm supposed to be negligent and unaware, now I'm over aware, I'm, I'm, I'm on heightened Likewise, they look at transition points where you are most vulnerable. So from your home to your office, to the street, etc. Where's the transition points? Vehicle to foot, foot to vehicle, etc. So strategically, these are dangerous points. And uh, these are times where you are most preoccupied. So you look in between the mechanics, the dynamics, the transitions, whether you're fumbling for your, for your keys, getting into the car, you've got your bag, etc. So you need to consider how am I leaving the vehicle, home, office, small, or am I returning at these points? So it's simple points, but we need to have a subconscious third eye where you don't go into condition white, but you come and you relax, but mostly how you become more vigilant. Like guys, we are bad areas um, when, when you are parking your vehicle, the safety and security. So uh, are your parking points near points of concealment where you cannot see, you do not know, or it's more clear. So you, 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 you've parked in an area where there's a lot of blind spots. So you've created an a unsafe parking environment. So you could be very vigilant when you uh, embark in this embark. But, in actual fact, you've parked at a spot, which is very harmful. So your vigilance is good, but not so good. Why? Because you've compromised in just a spot where you parked. So what's the ability to have visuals of your vehicle at a good distance? Then a well-lit well -lit area. So if you're going to park in the afternoon, but it might be late and sunset. So it's a compromise. And uh, how many hiding places are they close to your vehicle? Likewise, if you notice there is some threat, something suspicious, how easy is it for you to get help? 
and escape. So how easy is it for you to be aware of, of suspicious people, suspicious, suspicious vehicles, um, hiding places, etc. So that distance that you have is, is, is an advantage. How much distance you need to be from your vehicle that you can see visibility around the vehicle, the areas, the, the threat pyramid, which we demand flight. So it's called visual distance and a threat pyramid. So you create your own threat pyramid so that uh, you can have visuals on the vehicle. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect one and all and, and safeguard us uh, physically, uh, mentally, psychologically, and iman and amal wise from all the fitness. The amal for today is fa'alaykum bi sunnati, told steadfast on sunnah and the sunnah of uh, the rightly guided khulafa addu alayha bin nawajiz, all firmly steadfast onto the sunnah of Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.